As Nick Schifrin reports, the small insects pose a serious threat to food security throughout the region. On the Las Vegas Strip, right across from the Mirage, is this. In Sin City, it's the insect invasion putting on a show no one can escape. They popped up out of nowhere. A 24-7 onslaught of grasshoppers that really sticks with you. What the heck? Dude, you're all covered in locusts. I know. Like, you're just covered in them, dude. In a year marked by the extraordinary, a phenomenon unfolds across America, so rare, so profound, it's been 221 years in the waiting. Imagine beneath your feet an army, not of soldiers, but of cicadas, awakening in unison from a slumber that spans generations. This isn't the plot of a science fiction movie. This is 2024, the year North America becomes the stage for a simultaneous explosion of bugs unlike anything recorded in modern history. Welcome to Jesus' Gospel, where we peel back the layers of our world to reveal the divine fingerprints left on creation, where every event, every sign, points us back to the timeless words of the Bible. Today we're venturing into a tale of mystery, awe, and revelation as we explore the terrifying trumpets and locusts like swarms descending upon America. Could this be the wrath of God or a sign that the end is near? For the first time since the early days of the United States, since Thomas Jefferson presided over the nation and Napoleon cast his shadow over Europe, two broods of cicadas are emerging simultaneously in 17 states. But these are not the locusts of biblical fame, they are cicadas, creatures of a different order. Yet their arrival forces us to ponder the wonders of creation and the prophetic scriptures that speak of plagues and trumpets heralding the end times. In Illinois and Indiana, the air will fill with the sounds of a chorus millennia in the making. These aren't the annual cicadas with which many are familiar. These are periodical cicadas, magic cicadas, that live underground for either 13 or 17 years before emerging in a spectacle of sound and flight. Over 190 varieties in North America alone, yet only here, in the U.S., do we witness this periodical marvel this overwhelming testament to the cycles of life and death that govern our world. What does it mean when the ground bursts open and the air thrums with the calls of billions of cicadas? Is it merely a quirk of nature, or could it be a modern-day parable, a reminder of the words of Matthew 24, 7, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. While cicadas are not the locusts that John saw in his revelation, their emergence in such biblical proportions forces us to reflect on the world around us, to see the signs and wonders that remind us of a greater power at work. This event, awe-inspiring and terrifying in its scope, challenges us to consider our place in the creation narrative. Scientists urge us not to harm these cicadas, for they do not harm us, they nourish the trees under which they were born, completing a cycle that predates our most ancient texts. They remind us of the resilience of life, of nature's capacity for renewal and rebirth. As these cicadas emerge, blanketing the land in a spectacle unseen by any living person, we are reminded of the beauty and terror of the natural world, a world that in its complexity and mystery mirrors the multifaceted teachings of the Bible. Today we stand on the brink of history, witnessing events that compel us to look up from our daily toil and wonder are we witnessing the unfolding of prophecy or are we simply spectators to the marvels of creation in the vast tapestry of 2024 a year already brimming with stories that will be told for generations there emerges a narrative so bewildering it compels us to question the very fabric of our reality across the expanse of america from the bustling streets of urban landscapes to the tranquil silence of rural expanses, the air vibrates with the echoes of mysterious trumpet sounds, while the earth itself seems to pulsate with the emergence of cicada swarms. This isn't just a rare natural occurrence, it's a phenomenon that challenges our understanding, stirring within us a mixture of awe, fear, and profound curiosity. Imagine, if you will, the sudden, harmonious sound of trumpets filling the air, unexplained, resonant, and seemingly divine. These sounds, reported sporadically across the globe in past years, have taken on a new intensity in 2024, 
capturing the imagination and trepidation of millions. They hearken back to biblical prophecies, to the seven trumpets signaling apocalyptic events, inviting us to wonder are these the celestial announcements foretold in Revelation? The interpretations vary, from scientific to spiritual, yet the impact is undeniably profound, prompting widespread discussion and debate. Simultaneously, as if orchestrated by an unseen hand, the land itself comes alive with the emergence of cicadas, specifically two broods unseen together since the dawn of the 19th century. This year, 17 states bear witness to a spectacle that blurs the line between science and miracle. Illinois and Indiana, in particular, find themselves at the heart of this cicada convergence, hosting both the 13-year and the 17-year broods in a simultaneous explosion of life that defies easy explanation. With over 190 varieties in North America alone, the cicadas' emergence in such staggering numbers and with such precise timing speaks to a natural world that remains full of mystery and wonder. The reaction across America has been as varied as it has been intense. Scientists and scholars, theologians and laypeople alike, all seek to understand the significance of these events. Social media buzzes with theories and testimonials, news outlets report with a mixture of fascination and unease, and communities across the affected states prepare for the impact of these dual phenomena. The sounds of the cicadas reaching up to 105 decibels become the soundtrack of a summer like no other, a reminder of nature's indomitable will and its capacity to astonish. But beyond the immediate sensory impact, beyond the noise and the spectacle, lies a deeper, more reflective response. These events compel us to look beyond the mundane, to ponder the mysteries that lie at the heart of our existence. The cicadas, with their lengthy subterranean gestation, emerge not just as insects, but as symbols of rebirth and renewal, of life's enduring cycle. The trumpets, with their ethereal beauty and haunting mystery, remind us of the profound and often inexplicable nature of our world. Brother and sister, as we stand witness to these extraordinary events, we are reminded of the words of Job 12, 7, 10, but ask the animals, and they will teach you, or the birds in the sky, and they will tell you or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, or let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. In the cicada's song and the trumpet's call, we hear echoes of creation's vast, unfolding story, inviting us to listen, reflect, and marvel at the wonders of a world that remains ever full of mystery and majesty. In a year that already feels lifted from the pages of a storybook, a chapter unfolds that harkens back to the very dawn of civilization itself. Across the American landscape, a phenomenon erupts with such magnitude, it mirrors the ancient plagues that once brought empires to their knees. We are not witnessing the emergence of mere locusts, but cicadas, creatures often confused for their biblical counterparts, yet the scale of their arrival in 2024 forces us to draw parallels to the most ominous of scriptural warnings. This year, for the first time in over two centuries, two broods of cicadas, those harbingers of change, have emerged simultaneously in 17 states, a convergence that defies mere coincidence. The last occurrence of such an event dates back to 1803, a time when the world was a vastly different place. Now as then, the land teems with life emerging from the depths of the earth, a spectacle of nature's awe-inspiring cycle of rebirth. Illinois and Indiana stand at the epicenter of this phenomenon, witnessing the dual emergence of both the 13-year and the 17-year broods, a natural marvel that has captivated the nation's attention. With over 190 varieties of cicadas in North America alone, this event transcends mere biological curiosity. It serves as a profound reminder of the world's hidden rhythms and the mysteries that lie beneath our feet. These creatures, which spend the majority of their lives in darkness before emerging into the light, offer a powerful metaphor for renewal and transformation, themes deeply woven into the fabric of biblical narrative. The biblical references to locusts most notably in the plagues of Egypt, 
and the visions of revelation evoke a sense of divine intervention, of nature employed as the instrument of judgment and prophecy. In Revelation 9 3, 10, John speaks of locusts that are given power like that of scorpions of the earth, a vivid image that resonates with the overwhelming impact of the cicada emergence. While the cicadas do not bring destruction but rather contribute to the cycle of life, fertilizing the earth and heralding a period of growth, the symbolic parallels to these scriptural locusts invite contemplation on the themes of warning, preparation, and redemption that pervade the biblical text. As we explore the scientific explanations for this dual emergence, we find that the cicadas' synchronized arrival is a survival strategy, a way to overwhelm predators through sheer numbers, ensuring the survival of the species. This strategy, known as predator satiation, mirrors the overwhelming force of the biblical locusts, which serve to humble the mightiest of rulers and remind humanity of the power that lies beyond its grasp. In this remarkable year, as we witness the cicada song fill the air and the earth give birth to life once hidden, we are called to reflect on the lessons of the past and the messages encoded in the natural world. Just as the locusts of the Bible served as signs and portents, so too do these cicadas prompt us to ponder the deeper meanings of our existence and the divine intricacies of the world around us. The emergence of cicadas in such historic numbers invites us to marvel at the wonders of creation, to see in their ascent a reflection of our own journey towards understanding and enlightenment. As we delve into the mysteries of nature and scripture, we find a story that is ever unfolding, a narrative that speaks to the heart of our shared human experience, reminding us that in every ending, there is a new beginning, in every darkness, a light that awaits. In the annals of history, few natural phenomena have struck as much awe and fear into the hearts of humankind as the swarms of locusts. These events, recorded with meticulous detail in religious texts, carry with them a weight of divine significance, often interpreted as omens or direct interventions from the heavens. Today, as we witness the emergence of cicadas in an event unparalleled in over two centuries, we are compelled to draw parallels, to search for meaning in the chorus of billions that now fill our skies. But how does this modern marvel align with the ancient descriptions found within the sacred pages of the Bible? Consider the plague of locusts in Egypt a calamity so severe it threatened the very foundation of an empire. These locusts, described in Exodus as covering the sun and devouring everything in their path, serve as a powerful symbol of divine wrath and the fragility of human pride. Fast forward to 2024, and while the cicadas are not the devourers their locust counterparts were, the sheer scale of their emergence, affecting 17 states and involving two distinct broods, echoes the biblical magnitude and its potential for awakening a collective consciousness to a power beyond our understanding. Fascinating, isn't it? How the rhythm of these cicadas, creatures spending most of their life in obscurity before bursting forth in mass, mirrors the sudden onslaught of locusts in historical and biblical narratives. Yet, there's a scientific beauty to this. The cicada's emergence is a feat of precise biological timing and survival strategy, synchronized to overwhelm predators and ensure the proliferation of their species. This biological phenomenon, while vastly different in its impact on human life and livelihood compared to the destructive locusts of the past, invites us to reflect on the interconnectedness of all life and the signs embedded within the natural world. And so we find ourselves at the intersection of science and spirituality, where the cicada song becomes more than a natural curiosity, it becomes a metaphor for rebirth, for the inexorable cycle of life that continues beneath our feet, unseen yet profoundly influential. As we delve into this extraordinary event, we are reminded of the words in Joel 2.25, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten a promise of restoration and hope amidst devastation. In witnessing the cicada's emergence, are we not also reminded of the resilience and renewal inherent in the natural world and, by extension, within ourselves? As these creatures complete their long-awaited journey from darkness into light, they challenge us to consider the lessons of the past, 
the promises of Scripture, and the marvels of the world around us. Embarking on a journey through the mysterious and the unexplained, we find ourselves confronted with phenomena that challenge our understanding of the natural world. Among these, the eerie sounds of trumpets echoing through the sky stand out, compelling us to question what lies beyond the visible and the known. Reports of these sounds, both fascinating and unsettling, have surged in recent times, drawing attention from across the globe. In the year 2024 alone, Instances of these mysterious sounds have been documented in over a dozen countries, with more than 50 separate events recorded and shared through various media channels. These occurrences span continents, from the urban sprawls of North America to the remote landscapes of Scandinavia, each account adding to a tapestry of mystery that envelops our planet. Social media platforms, the digital age's town squares, have become the primary stage for sharing these experiences. One video, captured in the quiet suburbs of a Midwest American town, garnered over 10 million views in just a few weeks, its comment section a melting pot of theories, fears, and awe. Another recording, this time from a densely populated city in Brazil, achieved a similar viral status, with the sound's intensity and clarity leaving thousands of viewers in disbelief. The public reaction to these sounds varies widely, from curiosity and wonder to anxiety and fear. News outlets, in attempting to report on these events, often find themselves at the intersection of skepticism and sensationalism. Scientific experts called upon to shed light on these phenomena propose various explanations, from unusual atmospheric conditions affecting sound propagation to industrial activities producing unexpected acoustic effects. Yet, despite these efforts, a definitive explanation remains elusive. Historically, similar sounds have been reported, though less frequently given the limitations of communication technology. Accounts from the 18th and 19th centuries, found in letters and local newspapers, describe sky trumpets and other unexplained acoustic phenomena, suggesting that what we experience today may be part of a larger, cyclic pattern of the natural world or perhaps something beyond our current understanding. The significance of these events extends beyond their immediate impact, prompting discussions that weave together threads of science, spirituality, and the human imagination. The lack of concrete explanations for the trumpet sounds leaves room for interpretation, with some drawing parallels to biblical passages, such as Revelation 8, 10, 11, where a great star, blazing like a torch, falls from the sky, accompanied by the sound of a trumpet, heralding significant events to come. Understanding the significance of the mysterious trumpet sounds requires delving into specific events, comparing them with biblical descriptions, and examining their impact within the Christian community. Let's look at tangible instances in the data surrounding these phenomena to draw a more detailed and compelling narrative. In recent years, particularly in 2024, the mysterious trumpet sounds have been reported with increasing frequency around the globe. One notable event occurred in Dallas, Texas last year, where hundreds of residents reported hearing a trumpet-like sound that lasted approximately five minutes. Another significant occurrence was documented in Jakarta, Indonesia, in September 2015, where similar sounds disrupted the night leading to over 200 calls to local authorities from concerned citizens. These events are part of a larger pattern, with over 60 documented instances occurring globally in the first half of 2024 alone. The sounds vary in duration and intensity but share a commonality in their description a haunting, metallic resonance that seems to emanate from the sky itself. Social media platforms and news outlets have played a crucial role in documenting these phenomena, with one video from Dallas garnering over 15 million views on YouTube, accompanied by thousands of comments debating its origin and meaning. Comparing these events to biblical descriptions, particularly those found in Revelation 8 1 13, reveals striking parallels. The scripture speaks of seven trumpets that bring forth various judgments upon the earth. The first four trumpets are specifically associated with natural disasters and cosmic disturbances, 
themes that resonate with the unsettling nature of the trumpet sounds reported. Within the Christian community, interpretations of these events vary widely. Some view them as literal fulfillments of the prophecies in Revelation, seeing a direct correlation between the modern-day occurrences and the biblical description of the end times. This perspective is supported by the specificity of the sounds and their alignment with scriptural warnings. However, others within the community advocate for a more symbolic interpretation, suggesting that these sounds serve as a reminder of God's power and presence, rather than a direct signal of impending apocalypse. This viewpoint emphasizes the importance of spiritual readiness and reflection, rather than literal prediction. Historical precedents for similar phenomena add a layer of complexity to the discussion. For example, in the late 1700s, reports from the New England colonies described trumpet sounds that caused widespread alarm and speculation. These historical accounts, when examined alongside modern instances, suggest a recurring pattern of unexplained auditory phenomena that transcends specific time periods or geographical locations. The debate over the significance of these sounds continues to unfold, with each new event adding to the tapestry of interpretations and understandings. What remains clear is the profound impact of these occurrences on the collective psyche, prompting individuals and communities to confront the mysteries of existence and the possibility of divine communication in an increasingly secular world. In a world where the mysterious and unexplained become part of our daily discourse, the recent occurrences of unidentifiable trumpet sounds and the historic emergence of cicadas have reignited discussions on eschatology the study of the end times. This contemplation isn't without its basis in real events with over 60 instances of these trumpet sounds reported globally in 2024, and a cicada emergence unprecedented since 1803. These phenomena beg a deeper examination through both scholarly and theological lenses. Turning to the theological perspective, one cannot overlook the resemblance between the reported trumpet sounds and the biblical prophecy found in Revelation 8, 1, where seven trumpets herald significant events leading up to the end times. This scriptural reference has become a focal point for interpretation within the Christian community, sparking debates and discussions on online forums and social media platforms, where believers and skeptics alike seek to understand the implications of these sounds. Videos capturing these trumpet sounds have amassed views numbering in the millions, with one notable recording from Dallas, Texas, reaching over 15 million views. Each viewing invites reflection on the profound and often unsettling questions about our place in the cosmos and the timeline of existence. The Cicada Emergence, affecting 17 states with a synchronicity unseen for over two centuries, adds another layer to this eschatological puzzle. While cicadas are not directly mentioned in biblical prophecy, the scale and timing of their arrival resonate with themes of renewal and judgment often associated with eschatological events. The sheer number of cicadas emerging after 13 or 17 years underground parallels the biblical narrative's use of specific time frames to signify periods of trial, transformation, and ultimately, redemption. Scholars of eschatology point to these phenomena as examples of how modern-day events can reflect, echo, or even fulfill ancient prophecies, depending on one's interpretation. Yet, they caution against a literalist reading that may incite fear or sensationalism. Instead, they advocate for a metaphorical understanding that sees these signs as invitations to introspection, ethical living, and spiritual renewal. Reflecting on these events in the context of eschatology doesn't necessitate a prediction of the end, but rather a reminder of the transient nature of our existence and the importance of living a life aligned with spiritual values. The discussion surrounding the trumpet sounds and cicada emergence backed by real numbers, dates, and widespread public reaction serves not as a harbinger of doom but as a call to awareness and readiness encouraging a collective shift towards deeper faith and understanding. In this light, the events of 2024 are not mere anomalies but signposts, urging us towards a renewed focus on the core tenets of faith, hope, and love. They remind us that, 
While the end times remain a mystery hidden within the divine timeline, our response to these signs can shape our journey, fostering a community that chooses resilience, reflection, and spiritual growth over fear and uncertainty. In the intricate tapestry of Revelation, the sounding of the seven trumpets serves as a divine alarm, each blast heralding cataclysmic events designed to awaken humanity to the realities of spiritual warfare and divine judgment. As we've witnessed phenomena that resonate with the foretold trumpet sound, it's crucial to understand what lies beyond, particularly after the chilling echo of the fifth trumpet fades into the silence of anticipation. This narrative isn't just a tale of doom, it's a call to vigilance, a reminder of the resilience of faith amidst the storm of divine reckoning. The fifth trumpet, as described in Revelation 9, unveils a bottomless pit, from which emerges a horde of locusts, not ordinary locusts, but entities with the power to torment those not sealed by God, for five months. This is a scene of cosmic conflict, a spiritual battle manifesting in the physical realm, a vivid depiction of the consequences of turning away from the divine. But the narrative doesn't end here, it intensifies, urging us to brace for what follows. With the sound of the sixth trumpet, a voice from the four horns of the golden altar commands the release of four angels bound at the great river Euphrates. These angels, prepared for this very hour, day, month, and year, are set loose to kill a third of mankind. The imagery is stark, a representation of war and destruction on an unimaginable scale, prompted by human disobedience and heralding a further unfolding of divine judgment. But it's the seventh trumpet that brings the narrative to its zenith. Its blast signifies the culmination of God's mystery, as promised to his servants, the prophets. The kingdom of the world becomes the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. This final trumpet signals the ultimate victory of good over evil, of God's reign over the chaos of a fallen world, a beacon of hope amidst the preceding turmoil. As believers, witnessing or learning of events that echo these biblical prophecies, the call to vigilance becomes paramount. The emergence of cicadas, reminiscent of the locusts of the fifth trumpet, the mysterious trumpet sounds resonating across the globe serve not as markers of fear but as reminders of our call to faithfulness and spiritual preparedness. They beckon us to look beyond the physical manifestations and seek the spiritual truths they signify. In contemplating the sequence of the trumpets, we're encouraged to ponder the signs that may precede the sixth and seventh trumpets. While no one can predict the day or the hour, the essence of vigilance lies in a state of constant readiness, in living a life that reflects the teachings of Christ, in being lamps filled with oil, burning brightly amidst the darkness of uncertainty. The potential signs of the coming trumpets could manifest in various forms environmental upheavals, shifts in global power dynamics, or even more subtle spiritual awakenings within the hearts of believers worldwide. The key is not to decipher these signs with a sense of dread but to interpret them through the lens of faith, as opportunities for renewal, for deepening our commitment to the path of righteousness. In this journey through the unfolding of the trumpets, let us be reminded that these are not mere stories from an ancient text, but living words, meant to guide, to warn, and to inspire. As we navigate the complexities of our times, let the sound of the trumpets not provoke fear but foster a spirit of resilience, a readiness to stand firm in faith, and a heart open to the transformative power of God's grace. In this moment of reflection, amidst the unfolding mysteries and the echoes of the divine, let us bow our heads and unite our hearts in prayer, seeking the light of guidance through the shadows of the present. O Lord, our God, whose voice whispered the cosmos into being, and whose breath gives us life, we stand before you in a world that seems to tremble with uncertainty. We've witnessed the wonders of your creation, the cicadas emerging after years of silence, the unexplained sounds that fill our skies, reminiscent of the trumpets spoken of in Revelation. These events, Lord, have stirred within us a whirlwind of questions, of awe, and, for some, of fear. We come to you now, 
seeking comfort for those who are troubled, guidance for those who are searching, and reassurance for all who are afraid. Remind us, Father, that your plans are not for harm but for a future filled with hope. In the midst of these events, help us to see your hand at work, guiding us toward a deeper understanding of your will and drawing us closer to you. Strengthen our faith, O God, that we may stand firm on the foundation of your word. Let us not be swayed by the winds of fear or carried away by the currents of speculation. Instead, anchor us in the truth of your promises, that we may be beacons of hope and love in a world that desperately needs both. Inspire us, Lord, to engage more deeply with our communities, to extend our hands in charity, and to be the embodiment of your love on earth. In a time when division seems rampant, let your church be a symbol of unity and compassion, bringing light to the dark corners of this world. And as we navigate the uncertainties of our times, remind us of the words of Joshua 1.9, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go may this promise fill us with courage and peace knowing that we are never alone, that you walk beside us every step of the way. Let this prayer be a catalyst for change in our hearts and in our lives. Let us move forward, not in fear, but in faith, embracing the challenges and opportunities of this moment as avenues for growth and service. May we remain steadfast in our commitment to you, Lord, trusting in your plan and open to the ways you are working in and through us. In all things, may we reflect the love of God, reaching out to those in need, standing up for justice and truth, and living out the gospel in word and deed. For it is in giving that we receive, in forgiving that we are forgiven, and in dying to self that we are born to eternal life. In the name of God we pray. Amen. As we conclude this prayer, let us carry its essence into our daily lives. The events around us, whether they are signs of the times or simply the natural rhythms of the earth, call us to a deeper engagement with our faith and with the world. This moment in history, with all its uncertainties and wonders, is an invitation to live out the gospel with renewed vigor, to deepen our trust in God, and to join together in a community of faith that rises above fear and division. Let us embrace this calling with open hearts and willing spirits, ready to be the hands and feet of God in a world that yearns for hope and healing. As we draw the curtains on today's exploration of celestial mysteries, trumpet sounds, and the symbolic emergence of cicadas, we're reminded of the intricate dance between the divine and the earthly, a dance that beckons us to look deeper, to seek understanding beyond the surface. Today, we've journeyed through the scriptural landscapes of Revelation, pondered the significance of the events unfolding around us, and sought comfort and direction in prayer. Our exploration is a testament to the commitment of Jesus' gospel. To navigate the intersections of faith, prophecy, and the unfolding tapestry of current events. In moments like these, where the extraordinary becomes the fabric of our daily existence, staying informed and spiritually attuned is more crucial than ever. It's here, at the confluence of wonder and wisdom, that we find the strength to face the unknown, armed with hope and fortified by faith. So, I invite you, yes, you watching right now, to join us on this continuing journey. Like, subscribe, and share this video, not just for more content, but for more insights that challenge, inspire, and uplift. Your engagement helps us spread light in times that often seem shadowed by confusion and fear. Before we part, remember the words of Jeremiah 29 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Let this promise guide us as we navigate the complexities of our world, knowing that, in every uncertainty, there's a purpose, in every trial, a lesson, and in every moment, an opportunity to grow closer to the divine. Don't forget to turn on those notification bells for the latest updates, ensuring you never miss out on a moment of discovery. As we venture into tomorrow, let us do so with hearts full of hope, eyes open to the wonders around us, and spirits ready to embrace whatever comes with courage and faith. 
Until next time, stay blessed, stay curious, and always stay in faith. Are you recording this? What's going on? All the lights are traffic lights out too. Oh my god. Yo. What is going on? Yo, that's a wall. What? Yo, they're about have you seen what's unfolding right above us in the skies? Across the globe, from the bustling streets of New York to the serene landscapes of New Zealand, the sky is telling us a story, a story that's both bewildering and awe-inspiring. Just last week, reports flooded in of a cloud formation so peculiar it stopped the city rush hour in its tracks, a circle missing right in the cloud's heart, like a piece taken from a cosmic puzzle. Some strange noises heard around the world the last few weeks has uh, people buzzing, especially on YouTube. Clips posted from Arizona to England and right next door in Manitoba, all showing folks alarmed by what sounds like a noise straight out of a science fiction Investigators flick. Investigators are trying to solve a bizarre mystery in flight. Curiosity videos of what appears to be the same strange noise popping up from all over the world online. And as CGB thinks that Leah Bolton explains, it's not just videos from the other side of the globe. There is what does this mean? Are these just quirks of nature? Or could there be a deeper, more divine message encoded in these celestial phenomena? Today we're diving into a journey that bridges the gap between the heavens and the earth. We're not just talking about any signs, we're exploring the signs that have been whispered about for millennia those foretold in the Bible against the backdrop of our modern day world events. Let's take a moment to reflect on Jesus' words in Luke 21:11. There will be great earthquakes, famines and pestilences in various places, and fearful events and great signs from heaven. Now, align that with the recent surge in natural disasters and that strange light dance in the sky witnessed by thousands worldwide. It feels like the chapters of the Bible are coming alive, doesn't it? But hold on, we're not here to spread doom or fear. Rather, we're on a quest for understanding, for preparedness. It's about connecting the dots between the ancient scriptures and the evening news, finding peace and purpose amidst the unfolding signs. Stick around as we unpack these celestial messages, scrutinized through the lens of biblical prophecy and the current global pulse. It's more than a tale of prophecy, it's about our collective journey towards understanding and ultimately redemption. Let's peel back the layers of mystery together with open hearts and eager minds. Diving into the heart of the matter, Let's unfold the pages of Scripture where the end times are vividly sketched. Matthew 24, Luke 21, and the dramatic visions of Revelation serve as our guideposts, painting a picture of the times leading up to the second coming of Jesus. Matthew 24 throws the first beacon of light on this path, where Jesus himself outlines the sequence of events, wars and rumors of wars, nations rising against nations. It's as if today's headlines are echoing these very warnings. Think about it the geopolitical tensions we're witnessing, the conflicts that are almost routine news, aren't they reminiscent of nation will rise against nation? Then, there's Luke 21, speaking of great earthquakes, famines, and pestilences in various places. Recent years have shown us an uptick in natural disasters that leave us grappling with their aftermath. From the unprecedented wildfires across continents to the hurricanes that have intensified in both frequency and ferocity, it's as though nature itself is resonating with these ancient prophecies. And who could overlook Revelation? It's apocalyptic imagery of celestial upheavals, the sun turning black, the moon blood red, stars falling from the sky. While these might sound metaphorical to some, the recent rare celestial events like the blood moons and solar eclipses witnessed globally inject a tangible reality into these prophecies. It's not just about awe-inspiring sights, it's about the significance they hold in the grand cosmic narrative outlined in Scripture. But why does all this matter? It brings us to a crucial point vigilance and spiritual readiness. The Bible doesn't just share these prophecies to satisfy our curiosity or to instill fear. No, it's a call to readiness. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come Matthew 24, 42. It's a clear directive to be spiritually alert, to live in a manner that reflects our readiness for Jesus' return. This vigilance isn't about eyeing the sky obsessively for signs or living in a constant state of anxiety over natural disasters. It's about the state of our hearts, our relationship with God, and how we live out our faith in our daily lives. Are we embodying the love, compassion, and righteousness that Jesus taught? Are we prepared, not just in understanding the signs, but in aligning our lives with the teachings of Christ? 
Reflecting on these prophecies and their connection to the world we live in today isn't just an intellectual exercise. It's a spiritual checkpoint, a moment to assess our path and ensure it's leading us closer to God. It's a reminder that amidst the chaos, the uncertainty, and the spectacular signs, our focus should remain on living lives that reflect the hope, faith, and love we're called to in Christ. As we navigate these intriguing yet tumultuous times, let's cherish this journey of understanding and preparedness. Together, let's keep our lamps burning brightly, filled with the oil of faith and anticipation, ready for the moment we meet our Lord face to face. Let's move forward with courage, strengthened by the knowledge that these signs, as foretold, are not just warnings but also heralds of the glorious hope that lies ahead for those who believe. So, my friends, as we ponder the skies and the scriptures, let's do so with hearts and minds open to the transformative power of God's Word. Let's ensure that our spiritual readiness is not just about anticipation but about active, loving engagement with the world around us as beacons of Christ's light and love. Of course, let's infuse the script with concrete examples and references to align with your audience's expectations. As we thread the needle between prophecy and present-day occurrences, let's anchor our discussion in tangible, real-world events that mirror the biblical signs of the end times. The scriptures Matthew 24, Luke 21, Revelation spell out phenomena that astonishingly mirror what's unfolding around us. Take, for instance, the natural disasters that have surged in both frequency and ferocity. In 2020 alone, wildfires ravaged over 10.3 million acres in the United States, according to the National Interagency Fire Center, a stark echo of Luke 21.11's forewarning of great earthquakes, famines, and pestilences in various places. Similarly, hurricanes are intensifying, with the Atlantic hurricane season of 2020 breaking records with 30 named storms, as per the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration NOAA. These are not isolated incidents but part of a growing trend of environmental upheaval. The heavens, too, have spoken. The super blood wolf moon of January 2019 had onlookers in awe and contemplation, a celestial event some align with Revelation 6 12's darkened sun and blood red moon. While astronomers view these as natural lunar and solar cycles, for many believers, they're vivid illustrations of prophetic signs, signaling more than just the mechanics of the cosmos. Wars and geopolitical unrest further fulfill the prophecy of nations rising against nations, as stated in Matthew 24-7. The recent Taliban takeover in Afghanistan in August 2021, ending a 20-year conflict, serves as a harrowing reminder of the ongoing global discord and instability. In a world where information is at our fingertips, responses to these signs are varied. Scientists offer explanations grounded in data and research, attempting to demystify these phenomena, while societal reactions range from anxiety to incredulity. Yet, for those of faith, these events transcend mere coincidence or scientific rationale. They are perceived as divine signals, urging a reassessment of spiritual lives and a call to readiness. This dialogue between the ancient and the immediate invites us into a deeper reflection on our existence and our future. It's not about succumbing to fear but embracing the opportunity for renewal and spiritual vigilance. As we witness these signs, fires, storms, celestial wonders, we're reminded of the profound connection between Scripture and the world stage, between prophecy and our current reality. Our journey through these tumultuous times is not just a quest for understanding but a prompt towards action towards living with purpose, compassion, and anticipation of the promises yet to be fulfilled. In the fabric of these global phenomena, we find threads of hope, urging us to look beyond the temporal and towards the eternal promise of restoration and peace. Certainly incorporating real-life examples enhances the script's relevance and impact. Here's the revised version with examples. As we journey deeper into the complex tapestry of our times, a pressing challenge emerges, foretold by Jesus himself in Matthew 24, 5, for many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Messiah and will deceive many. This isn't merely an ancient caution, it's a stark reality unfolding before our eyes, resonating through our communities and across digital landscapes. Consider the curious case of Sergei Torop, a Russian traffic cop turned Vissarion who founded the Church of the Last Testament. Claiming to be the reincarnation of Jesus Christ, Torop attracted thousands to his settlement in Siberia, showcasing how potent and persuasive such deceptions can be. Or take the infamous figure of David Koresh, who led the Branch Davidians in Waco, Texas. Koresh's assertion of being a final prophet led to a tragic standoff in 1993, 
culminating in the loss of 76 lives. These events starkly illustrate the dangers posed by false messiahs and the profound impact they can have on believers and faith communities alike. In the digital era, the proliferation of such deceptions has found fertile ground. Platforms team with self-proclaimed spiritual gurus offering misleading interpretations of scripture or promising unearthly revelations, leading many astray from foundational biblical truths. The repercussions of these spiritual deceptions ripple through faith communities, sowing confusion, division, and disillusionment. Families find themselves at odds, individuals grapple with spiritual disenchantment, and communities stray from the gospel's core teachings. So how do we stand firm amid these turbulent currents? The Bereans in Acts 17.11 offer us a blueprint. They examine the scriptures daily to see if what Paul said was true. This practice of diligent scrutiny is our safeguard, a way to discern truth in a sea of falsehoods. Moreover, the role of community in fostering discernment cannot be overstated. Open, scripture-centered dialogue within faith communities can fortify believers against deception. Leaders should embody transparency and humility, grounding their guidance in the Bible, while individual believers are called to cultivate a personal, deep-seated relationship with Scripture. Highlighting these examples isn't meant to alarm but to equip and empower. In understanding the real and present challenge of false prophets, we're reminded of the imperative to root ourselves in the truth of the Gospel. Let's embrace this journey with wisdom and vigilance, ensuring our faith remains a beacon of hope and truth in an often confusing world. In a world brimming with uncertainty and turmoil, the anchors of faith and prayer have never been more vital. As we navigate these challenging times, these spiritual practices offer us not just solace, but a profound strength and clarity that can guide us through the stormiest of seas. Reflect on the power of faith, a force that Hebrews 11.1 1 describes as confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. It's this unshakable belief that has empowered believers throughout history to face adversity with courage and resilience. In moments when the ground beneath us seems to tremble, faith offers a solid rock on which to stand. Prayer, too, is indispensable. It's our direct line to the divine, a conversation that nourishes our souls and aligns our hearts with God's will. Philippians 4, 6, 7 urges us not to be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. It's through prayer that we find the peace that transcends all understanding guarding our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Consider the story of a small community in the Philippines, hit hard by Typhoon Haiyan in 2013. Amidst devastating loss, their faith and collective prayers became a beacon of hope. Through prayer, they found the strength to rebuild, not just their homes but their lives, anchored in a renewed trust in God's provision and timing. Or take the testimony of Sarah, a nurse from Italy, who faced the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. Amidst overwhelming circumstances, her daily commitment to prayer and scripture study became her lifeline, offering her peace amidst chaos and fortitude in the face of fear. Her story is a testament to the power of faith to transform our inner landscape, enabling us to face external challenges with an inner calm and resolve. These stories underscore the transformative power of faith and prayer. They remind us that, no matter the chaos that swirls around us, we can find peace and purpose within. It's through our steadfast belief, our fervent prayers, and the support of our faith communities that we navigate these uncertain times not with fear, but with a profound trust in the One who holds tomorrow. So let's draw closer to God through prayer, immerse ourselves in the wisdom of Scripture, and lean on the strength of our community. Together we can face whatever comes our way, bolstered by our faith, and the unwavering support of our fellow believers. Let's embrace this journey with open hearts, confident in the knowledge that we are never alone, and that through faith and prayer, we can find the guidance and strength we need for each new day. In the tapestry of signs heralding the end times, there's one thread that shines with a call to action evangelism, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come Jesus proclaims in Matthew 24:14. This isn't merely a forecast, it's a directive, urging us to spread the good news far and wide. Across the globe, believers are heeding this call with fervor, engaging in efforts that span from local community outreach to digital evangelism, reaching corners of the world once thought inaccessible. Consider the story of a digital missionary in Brazil who utilizes social media to share the gospel, reaching thousands who might never step foot in a church. 
or the grassroots movements in parts of Africa, where believers travel village to village, sharing Christ's love and teachings, even in the face of adversity. These efforts underscore a profound sense of urgency, a recognition that the message of hope and salvation is needed now more than ever. It's a call that beckons every believer, regardless of where they are or what they do. The field of evangelism is ripe, waiting for workers to step into the harvest. Yet evangelism goes hand in hand with service. James 2.18 challenges us, saying, Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. It's a powerful reminder that our faith is made manifest through our actions. Service be it feeding the hungry, supporting the widow and orphan, or simply being a comforting presence to those in need serves as a tangible expression of God's love to the world. Let the stories of individuals and communities engaging in these acts inspire us. Like the group of young adults in the Philippines, who, after a devastating typhoon, not only rebuilt homes but also facilitated Bible studies, bringing hope to a community in despair. Or the church in a small American town organizing weekly meals for those facing food insecurity, embodying the love of Christ through service. This call to evangelism and service isn't just for a select few, it's a mandate for all who follow Christ. It's about making the most of every opportunity to share the hope we have within us, to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God, as Micah 6 8 urges us. So let's rise to this call. Whether through words or deeds, let's make known the love and salvation found in Christ. Engage in your community, leverage technology, be creative, but most importantly, be faithful. Together, let's ensure the gospel reaches every corner of the earth, preparing the way for the Lord's return. Remember, each act of kindness, each word of truth, sows seeds that can change hearts and transform lives. Let's be relentless in our mission, fueled by love, driven by faith, and inspired by the promise of His coming kingdom. As we edge closer to the horizon where the dawn of Christ's return illuminates our path, the question of preparation becomes paramount. How do we, as individuals and communities, ready ourselves for this pivotal moment in history? First and foremost, Grounding ourselves in Scripture is essential. The Bible isn't just a book, it's the living Word of God, guiding us, comforting us, and preparing us for what's to come. Dive into its pages daily. Let the words of Christ in the Gospels shape your life, your decisions, and your interactions. In Matthew 22, 37, 39, Jesus simplifies the law into two commands, love God with all your heart, and love your neighbor as yourself. Imagine the transformation in our communities if we lived out these commands fully. Prayer is our next indispensable tool. It's our direct line to God, a way to align our will with His, to seek guidance, to intercede for our world. Make prayer a cornerstone of your daily life. Encourage prayer groups within your community, fostering a network of support and spiritual accountability. Living according to Jesus' teachings also means being peacemakers, advocates of reconciliation. In a world rife with conflict, our call is to be the light, promoting peace in our families, communities, and beyond. This peace begins in the heart, extends to our neighbors, and ultimately reaches the global stage. Being examples of God's love means serving those in need, embodying the compassion Christ showed, whether it's volunteering at a local shelter, supporting international missions, or simply being there for someone going through a tough time, these acts of love echo into eternity. Let's also harness the power of community. Strengthen your faith community by fostering environments of support, learning, and encouragement. Together you can delve deeper into Scripture, share in prayer, and mobilize to serve. Amidst these preparations, let's hold on to hope. The promise of Christ's return isn't a distant, abstract concept, it's a sure, impending reality that offers us hope beyond measure. Behold, I am coming soon. Revelation 22.12 reminds us, a promise that a new kingdom is on the horizon, one of peace, justice, and unending love. So, as we await this glorious day, let's prepare with intention. Live out the teachings of Jesus, serve with a heart of compassion, and foster communities of faith that shine brightly in a world in need of hope. Let's move forward with anticipation, joy, and a deep commitment to being reflections of Christ's love, ready to welcome His kingdom on earth. As we've journeyed together through the unfolding signs in the skies and on earth, and the profound call to readiness echoed in Scripture, it's clear that we stand at a pivotal moment in history. The signs we've observed, the shifts in our world, they're not mere coincidences or fleeting anomalies. They're markers on a path laid out long ago, 
signposts guiding us toward a future foretold with precision and purpose in the Bible. But let this awareness not lead us into fear. Instead, let it serve as a clarion call to spiritual awakening and action. These signs, these changes, are not the end of the story, they're the beginning of a new chapter, one filled with hope, renewal, and the promise of Christ's return. This moment in history invites us not to retreat but to step forward with courage and faith, to deepen our connection with God through prayer, to immerse ourselves in the truths of Scripture, and to join hands with our community in acts of service and love. Each day offers us a new opportunity to live out our faith, to be beacons of hope in a world searching for light. So as we close this chapter of our discussion, let's do so with hearts uplifted and spirits renewed. The journey ahead is one we walk together, buoyed by the promise of what's to come. Let us move forward with joy, anticipation, and a resolve to be ready, to stand firm in our faith, and to embrace the mission entrusted to us. I invite you, then, to engage further, to dive deeper into prayer, study, and community. Let's encourage one another, share insights, and grow together in faith. The path ahead is bright with the promise of His coming kingdom, and each step we take is one closer to seeing that promise fulfilled. As we stand at the crossroads of time, facing the horizon with anticipation and hope, let's unite in a prayer for guidance, strength, and wisdom in these transformative times. Heavenly Father, in the midst of these signs and times that stir our hearts and minds, we come before you seeking your light on our path. Grant us the courage to face the challenges of our days, the wisdom to discern your truth amidst the noise, and the strength to uphold your love and peace in every action. As we observe the unfolding signs around us, let our hearts not be troubled, but filled with the unwavering hope and trust in your promises. Help us to be vigilant, ready and active in our faith, spreading your message of salvation through our words and deeds. Lord, in this moment of prayer, unite us in spirit and purpose, and prepare us for the coming of your kingdom. May our lives reflect your love, and may our actions bring hope to those searching for light. Amen. Men. And now, to you, our cherished viewers, if this message has stirred something within you, if it has sparked a flame of hope, curiosity, or even urgency, we invite you to engage further. Like this video if it has resonated with you, helping spread its message like the light of dawn. Subscribe to join a growing community of souls journeying together towards understanding and readiness. And share this video, for in sharing we extend the invitation to others to join this exploration of faith and prophecy. We also encourage you to comment below. Share your thoughts, your experiences, and how you are preparing for the times ahead. How has faith shaped your journey through these uncertain times? What insights or hopes do you cling to as we navigate this shared path towards the future? Together, let's cultivate a space of support, learning, and anticipation for what lies ahead. In unity, we find strength, and in sharing, we discover hope. Let's journey forward, hand in hand, hearts aligned with the promise of His return. Several people heard and felt a loud noise around 12.30 Central Time this afternoon. News Channel 7's Tyler Allender joins us live in the studio. And Tyler, is any word on what it was?
Ron, with Tendal Eglin and NSA Panama City nearby, we're no stranger to loud booms from time to time. This particular one seems to be a mystery, though. But. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, steel yourselves, for the apocalyptic prophecies foretold in Scripture are unfolding before our very eyes. The seven trumpets of God are sounding, signaling approaching judgment and the arrival of the four dreaded horsemen of the apocalypse. The first trumpet has already sounded, with hail and fire mingled with blood cast upon the earth, burning a third of the trees in green grass. This devastation of the natural world is a wake-up call we have fallen out of harmony with God's creation. The second trumpet will soon follow, with a great burning mountain cast into the sea, turning a third of the waters to blood and killing countless sea creatures. The cycle of death accelerates as the judgments intensify. At the third trumpet's blast, a star called Wormwood will fall from heaven, poisoning a third of the rivers and waters, making them bitter and deadly to drink. The devastation mounts as the pure bounty of the earth turns toxic. When the fourth trumpet rings out, a third of the sun, moon, and stars will be struck and their light diminished for a third of the day and night. Even the celestial lights will be obscured as the apocalypse gathers momentum. But this is merely the beginning of the birth pangs, for after the fifth trumpet, the first horseman conquest, riding a white horse and carrying a bow will be released upon the earth. Crowns will be seized and the world thrown into chaos through war and enslavement. The sixth trumpet will unleash the second horseman of war astride his fiery red horse, taking peace from the earth, so that men slay one another mercilessly. Brother will turn against brother as the red mist of bloodlust descends. At the seventh trumpet, the nightmarish third horseman called Death, mounted upon his pale horse, will be given power to kill through sword, famine and plague over a fourth of the earth. Vast swaths of humanity will perish. And following these first three horsemen? The fourth and most terrifying of all hell itself personified, riding a pale horse called Misery with the power to torment both body and soul, as those still clinging to life envy the dead their release. Friends, the signs are clear that we are living in the final days before the return of our Lord and Savior. 
I implore you to repent of your sins, keep faith and gird yourselves through prayer and righteous living. For the seven trumpets are sounding and dread horsemen are loose upon the earth to purge the wicked, separating the wheat from the chaff and purifying fire before the second coming. Take heed, be watchful, and be ready, for the end is here. The First Horseman Conquest on the White Horse The White Horse of Revelation 6 represents the ultimate deception that will unfold in the end times. His rise to power involves enforcing a covenant with Israel, allowing the resumption of Jewish temple sacrifices and worship. This event marks the beginning of the final seven-year period known as Daniel's 70th week. However, in a shocking turn of events, the rider will break this covenant after three and a half years, setting up an abominable idol in the Holy of Holies the event known as the Abomination of Desolation, warned about by Jesus himself in Matthew 24:15. Right there, look, look at my camera. Let me see. Right there. Look, he has wings, look. <gasps> Videotape it. वीडियो में आप देखेंगे एक घोड़ा जो कि आसमान के ऊपर दौड़ता हुआ आपको दिखाई दे रहा होगा ये वीडियो बिल्कुल रियल है और ये वीडियो कैमरे में रिकॉर्ड हो जाती है अगर ये वीडियो कैमरे में रिकॉर्ड ना होती तो शायद कोई भी इस पे यकीन ना करता नाजरीन जैसे कि आप इस वीडियो में घोड़े को आसमान के ऊपर एक तरफ ऐसी दूसरी तरफ This abomination of desolation serves as a pivotal moment, signaling the start of the Great Tribulation the final three and a half years before Christ's return. Jesus emphasized the importance of recognizing this event, instructing his followers to flee to the mountains when they witnessed it, for it would mark the beginning of unparalleled tribulation and suffering. The white horse rider's identity is shrouded in mystery in multiple titles and descriptions found throughout the Bible. He is the seed of the serpent Genesis 3.15, the idol shepherd Zechariah 11:17, the little horn Daniel 7:8, the prince that shall come Daniel 9, the willful king. Daniel 11, the beast and the false prophet Revelation 13, the lawless one the man of sin and the son of perdition 2 Thessalonians 2. These titles paint a picture of a figure who is not only a powerful political and military leader, but also a religious deceiver who exalts himself above God. Interestingly, various groups and organizations have their own expectations and interpretations surrounding this enigmatic figure. The Vatican, with its advanced astronomical facilities, is said to be preparing to receive a visitor of extraterrestrial origin, possibly the White Horse Rider himself. One of the most striking aspects of the White Horse Rider is the potential for mistaken identity, with many erroneously identifying him as Christ himself. This mistake is precisely what Jesus cautioned against, warning that many would come in his name, deceiving many Matthew 24, 5. The text emphasizes the grave importance of understanding the true identity of this writer. As Jesus instructed, whoever reads, let him understand Matthew 24, 15. The appearance of the white horse rider is deeply intertwined with other prophetic events, such as the rapture of the church and the removal of the restraining force mentioned in 2 Thessalonians 2. The text suggests that the Antichrist cannot be revealed until after the rapture, as this event will open a window of opportunity for Satan to unleash his deception upon the world. Furthermore, the text delves into the concept of the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman from Genesis 3.15, interpreted as referring to the Antichrist and the Messiah, respectively. This spiritual lineage is explored further in Revelation 12, where the woman, Israel gives birth to the man-child Jesus Christ, while the great red dragon Satan attempts to devour him.
the catching up of the child in Revelation 12.5 is seen as a possible allusion to both Christ's ascension and the rapture of the church. The Second Horseman War on the Red Horse The second of these horsemen, the rider on the red horse, symbolizes the scourge of war that will ravage the world. As the Lamb opens the second seal, the Apostle John witnesses the emergence of the red horse, and its rider is granted the power to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, Revelation 6.4. The color red is a vivid representation of the bloodshed and violence that will ensue, echoing the words of Jesus in Matthew 24, 6, 7, where he warns of wars and rumors of wars as one of the signs of the end times. The Russia-Ukraine War, which escalated significantly with Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2021, has been a focal point of global attention, stirring fears and speculations that this conflict could spiral into a wider war, potentially even World War III. This concern is not unfounded given the complex international alliances and the geopolitical stakes involved, drawing parallels with the conditions that led to the first two world wars. In this context, the invocation of the Red Horse of the Apocalypse, as presented in the Book of Revelation, offers a provocative lens through which to view the unfolding situation. The war has indeed taken peace from the region, unsettling the international community and sparking fears of escalation into a broader conflict. The large sword, symbolizing the instruments of war, can be seen in the deployment of military hardware, cyber weaponry, and economic sanctions that have characterized the conflict. The devastating human cost, destruction of infrastructure, and displacement of civilians echo the apocalyptic vision of war's cruel toll on humanity. References to the Four Horsemen, including the Red Horse, by figures such as Dmitry Medvedev, as reported by Newsweek, underscore the gravity with which some view the conflict's potential to signal broader conflict. Medvedev's warning about the biblical apocalypse's horsemen already on their way in the context of the Ukraine war and international sanctions against Russia reflects a deep-seated concern about the confrontation's escalation, possibly the outbreak of World War III. The unleashing of the Red Horse also signifies the breakdown of peace and the escalation of conflicts on a global scale. Wars and violence will consume nations as the spirit of strife and hatred takes hold. This horseman's presence foreshadows a time of unprecedented turmoil where the foundations of society are shaken and the fragile fabric of human civilization is torn asunder. We can connect this biblical description to the current global context marked by the COVID-19 pandemic several parallels can be drawn. The pandemic itself, while primarily a health crisis, has exacerbated tensions, contributing indirectly to conflict and strife in various forms. The strain on resources, economic hardship, and political tension have amplified existing conflicts and could potentially ignite new ones. Countries and communities, already on edge due to the stress and uncertainty caused by the virus, find themselves more susceptible to discord and violence. Moreover, the pandemic has served as a catalyst for nationalistic and protectionist tendencies, leading to a growing sense of isolationism among countries. This shift towards self-preservation at the expense of global cooperation can be seen as a metaphorical fulfillment of the Red Horse's ride, where peace is taken from the earth, fostering an environment ripe for conflict and war. The disruption in international relations, coupled with the internal strife within nations struggling to manage the pandemic, highlights the multifaceted impact of this crisis on global peace and security. The emergence of the Red Horse also carries a symbolic significance that transcends physical warfare. It represents the spiritual battle that rages between the forces of good and evil, light and darkness. The Apostle Paul, in his epistle to the Ephesians, reminds us that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places Ephesians 6.12. As the end times unfold, the forces of darkness will intensify their assault, seeking to sow discord, hatred, and violence among the nations. The Red Horse serves as a harbinger of this spiritual conflict, a manifestation of the enemy's tactics to disrupt the peace and unity that God intended for his creation. In the midst of this turmoil, the followers of Christ are called to be peacemakers, ambassadors of reconciliation, and beacons of hope in a world torn by strife. The Apostle James exhorts us, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, 
gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy, James 3.17. As we witness the unfolding of prophetic events, including the appearance of the red horse, we must cling to the promises of God and the assurance of his ultimate victory. The Apostle John reminds us that he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. 1 John 4.4 4, Referring to the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. The red horse serves as a stark reminder of the reality of war and violence that will characterize the end times. The Third Horseman Famine on the Black Horse The Book of Revelation, a mysterious and often contentious part of the New Testament, provides a chilling prophecy of the end times through the vision of the four horsemen. Following the horsemen representing war comes the third, chilling figure the rider on the black horse, symbolizing the devastating impact of famine across the globe. This harrowing vision is unveiled as the Lamb opens the third seal, revealing not only the physical scarcity of food, but also the spiritual hunger that pervades the world in these prophesied times. As the Apostle John bears witness, the rider of the black horse holds a pair of scales in his hand, Revelation 6.5, a striking symbol of the scarcity and rationing that will befall humanity. The voice that accompanies this scene pronounces, a quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius Revelation 6, 6 highlighting the extreme inflation and dire scarcity of basic sustenance. The imagery of the scales speaks to a time when food will be so scarce that it must be carefully measured and weighed, a stark departure from the abundance God desires for His creation. According to the World Bank's food security update from March 20, 2024, domestic food price inflation remains alarmingly high across the globe, affecting a majority of low-income and middle-income countries. No less than 60% of low-income countries experience inflation rates higher than 5%, with similar distressing trends observed in lower-middle and upper-middle-income countries. This persistent inflation exacerbates the misery of those already struggling to feed themselves and their families, thrusting more individuals into the maw of food insecurity World Bank. Furthermore, recent findings from the Food Security Information Network highlight the direness of the situation. With inflation rates contributing to heightened food insecurity worldwide, one-third of low-income countries and lower-middle-income countries reported annual domestic food inflation exceeding 15%. Particularly alarming is the inflation rate in low-income countries, where consumer food price inflation touched almost 30% in September-October 2023, compared to the previous year IFPRI. This distressing trend is echoed by the U.S. Department of Agriculture's food price outlook for February 2024, which showed a 2.2% increase in food prices over the preceding year. The report indicates varying levels of food price inflation, significantly impacting affordability, especially for those already on the edge of poverty. The forecast hints at a continued strain on consumers, with all food prices predicted to rise by 2.5% in 2024 USDA. Drawing upon the symbolism of the black horse, the current global scenario of rising food prices and the resultant famine conditions vividly illustrate the profound effects of economic instability on food security. The parallel between the apocalyptic vision and the present reality serves as a sobering reminder of the fragile balance that sustains life. As individuals across various nations grapple with the harsh reality of inflated food costs, the specter of famine a dire consequence long forewarned in the biblical depiction of the black horse becomes increasingly tangible. Moreover, famine, as symbolized by the black horse, is more than a physical phenomenon it represents a deeper, spiritual dearth that afflicts humanity. Just as the body languishes without nourishment, the soul withers without spiritual sustenance. In the times preceding the return of Christ, humanity's estrangement from God will manifest both in a tangible lack of food and a profound spiritual emptiness. This famine is a somber reminder of the consequences of turning away from the providence and guidance of the Creator. The biblical narrative has long cautioned against the perils of ignoring the needs of the Spirit. The prophet Amos warned of a time when there would be a famine not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord Amos 8.11. The black horse of Revelation underscores this dual threat physical hunger paralleled by a famine of truth and righteousness in a world marred by sin and rebellion against God. Amid this bleak prophecy, the followers of Christ are called to be bearers of hope and ministers to those in need both physically and spiritually. 
as Jesus declared himself the bread of life. John 6, 35, his disciples are tasked with spreading this message of eternal sustenance that transcends the temporal trials of famine and scarcity. In a world hungering for truth and peace, the gospel offers the nourishment that can satisfy the deepest cravings of the human heart. The horseman on the black horse, therefore, serves as a somber caution and a call to action. It compels us to look beyond our immediate circumstances and to see the larger spiritual battle at play. In a world where famine and want threaten to overwhelm, we are invited to partake in the feast that God has prepared for those who love him a feast not of perishable goods, but of everlasting life and joy. As we navigate these turbulent times, may we hold fast to the promise that he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world, 1 John 4.4. 4 and may we be instruments of his grace and provision in a world starving for hope. The Fourth Horseman Death on the Pale Horse The unfolding visions within the book of Revelation continue to captivate and alarm with their vivid portrayal of the end times, marked notably by the release of four horsemen, each signaling their own form of apocalypse upon the earth. The arrival of the fourth horseman, astride a livid pale horse, ushers in an era defined by death and decay, with a breadth and magnitude that comprehends the very essence of finality and the cessation of life as, predominantly, envisioned by this chilling prophecy. As the Lamb unhitched the fourth seal, the Apostle John's gaze is met with the dreadful spectacle of the pale horse. This horse's rider is named Death, and Hades follows closely behind, symbolizing the grave, or the afterlife, receiving those who fall Revelation 6-7-8. The pallid hue of the horse mirrors the ghostly, sickly shadow that death casts over the land, illustrating the ultimate consequence of famine, war, and pestilence that precede it. According to the World Health Organization, the virus has claimed over 6.7 million lives globally, as of my last update, devastating millions of families and bringing to light the ever-present threat of pandemics. This toll is a stark testament to the prophecy's relevance, showcasing how disease can decimate populations, a scenario amplified by the prospect of emerging diseases due to climate change and encroachment on natural habitats. Famine and scarcity, often a dire consequence of war and environmental calamity, further propel mortality rates. According to the World Food Program, in 2022, nearly 349 million people were acutely food insecure facing emergency levels of hunger due to conflict, economic shocks, and climatic extremes. This situation is alarmingly reflective of the death and Hades wielded by the pale horse, signaling a perilous rise in hunger-induced mortality. Looking ahead, scientific predictions concerning climate change forewarn of increased food insecurity, the spread of infectious diseases, and the potential for conflict over dwindling natural resources. Such foresight aligns with the destructive path of the pale horse, extending its dark shadow into the future. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC reports highlight a future marked by heightened risks of extreme weather events, which will likely drive up food prices, exacerbate famine conditions, and potentially instigate resource-based conflicts, further inflating the death toll. Wars have raised civilizations, famine has weakened nations, and pestilence has swept relentlessly across continents throughout history. The ongoing conflict in Ukraine, for instance, has resulted in thousands of deaths and massive displacement, contributing to a broader humanitarian crisis. Historical conflicts, such as the Syrian Civil War, have led to hundreds of thousands of deaths, with the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reporting approximately 500,000 deaths since the war's inception. These confrontations mirror the biblical portrayal of death by the sword, underlining the devastating human cost of armed conflicts. Yet the pale horse represents these horrors magnifying in intensity and scope in the end times, as if the preceding calamities were but precursors to its dreadful campaign. This horseman, more than any other, signifies the culmination of humanity straying from divine guidance and the resulting inevitable reckoning. The representation of death and Hades conveys a dual layer of meaning. Not only is there the inevitable physical cessation of life, but also the spiritual death that arises from a life disconnected from spiritual truths. In this prophetic context, death is not just an end, but a consequence and, tragically, a transition to judgment. The symbolic meaning of the pale horse extends beyond the physical world into the spiritual. 
The Apostle Paul speaks to the Ephesians of putting on the armor of God to stand against the pervasive spiritual decay that challenges faith Ephesians 6 11, 17. The pale horse, then, is also a stark reminder of the spiritual death that befalls those who turn away from faith, hope, and love the essence of the Christian message. In the face of such ominous prophecies, the message to the followers of Christ is one of hope, vigilance, and preparation. Just as Christ overcame death, believers are called to foster and share a living faith, a beacon of hope against the despair that the pale horse signifies. Believers are urged to wear the armor of faith, to stand as testimonials of life in the shadow of death, offering solace, guidance, and salvation to a world ensnared by the fear of the end. As this horseman rides forth, it serves as a solemn reminder of the fragility of life and the inevitability of death. Yet, it also emphasizes the Christian calling to be agents of life, hope, and renewal. Amidst the dire prophecies, the faithful are assured of the ultimate victory of life over death, a promise sealed by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thus, while the pale horse looms large in the prophetic visions of the end times, offering a reminder of the mortality that defines the human condition, it simultaneously reinforces the Christian mandate to live in the light of eternal life, sharing the gospel of peace and redemption. As the world navigates these treacherous times, the faithful stand firm in the knowledge that, though the pale horse rides, its power is ultimately subdued by the sovereignty and grace of God, who holds the keys to life and death, and promises an everlasting kingdom where death shall be no more.